The Republic of the Sphere was the home of a multitude of powerful, innovative mech designs throughout its time, ranging from 3081 to 3151. Devlin Stone, the founder of the state, knew all too well that this republic at the heart of the Inner Sphere would need to be defended by some of the most powerful and technologically advanced war machines of the age as well as by some of the most skilled and brave pilots available in the Inner Sphere. This recreation of the Terran Alliance would have an abundance of both, though even that would not be strong enough to hold back the tides of war, and the tides of change that would swell from within, and from without, ultimately resulting in the death of the Republic in 3151 at the hands of the clans. The mech that will be covered in this video might be fitting in many ways, embodying the elements which Devil and Stone would have desired, but having a name which embodies the destruction of the Republic to all the citizens and peoples who loved it. Without further delay, let us begin looking at Scoble Mechwork's masterpiece, The Lament. A heavy mech weighing in at 65 tons, the Lament design despite utilizing mostly Inner Sphere technologies, seems to resemble many of its clan peers in terms of lethality and weapons arrangements, and was designed as a strong, fast, and well-armored heavy mech that could deliver hellish hammer blows on targets, and might even go as far as to destroy them outright in its opening volley. Scoble presented the design of the Lament to the Republic Armed Forces after Devil and Stone's retirement in the 3020s, and it would be appropriated for the state in 3127 after receiving approval from the Senate. Even upon its review, units within the Republic described it as being, quote, designed to crush battle mechs, unquote, and they weren't wrong. The Lament would serve in the RAF for 34 years after its introduction, and would fight against every major enemy of the Republic, in every major battle, and for all of its units. This fantastically designed mech will overwhelm most of its inner sure counterparts in the same weight class, either outrunning them, outfighting them, or outlasting them, and it's extremely impressive in being able to do so. But it also represents one of the core problems of the Republic of the Sphere itself. Inspired by battle mechs such as the Awesome and the Warhammer, this fast-moving heavy earned an incredible reputation on the battlefield all the same. The Lament would be on the front lines of the internal wars against its own citizens as they rose up across the Republic to either obtain independence or to return to their original successor states. In spite of the Republic's efforts to subdue these nationalist political movements through mass migrations of people or other lighter or even more heavy-handed means. Fighting against the Stormhammers, Dragon's Fury, Swordsworn, Banson's Raiders, Spirit Cats, and Steel Wolves, these mechs would always deliver, but this era of chaos would not end for the Republic, and it would only accelerate. Even before raising the Fortress Republic, the Draconis Combine, Clan Jade Falcon, the Capellan Confederation, and others would directly intervene inside of the Republic's territories. The Lament would be one of the key units able to rapidly take the fight to the enemies of the RAF, and would be deployed against these forces and others in a series of violent, bloody clashes. But despite this mech's hitting power and endurance, it was just never enough. World after world would fall, and eventually the Exarch Jonah Levin would raise the Fortress Republic sectioning off the outer layers of the Republic to certain capture and destruction, in favor of saving the core states of the Republic of the Sphere. The most productive worlds remained near Terra in this bubble, and huge volumes of military equipment would be produced to defend this new frontier. But eventually they were also going to be used to strike back, and to retake all that had been lost. The Lament was one piece in all this, and large numbers of them would be produced for this grand army. The one meant to first defend the Republic, 
and then to destroy the invaders. The Republic wasn't beaten, not yet. But unfortunately, the Lament and many of the other battle mechs designed for the Republic had a key, major flaw behind all of them, which was namely their logistics chain and cost. The Lament utilizes every possible technology to enhance its efficiency, and would draw up costs as a result. Worse still, not only was this battle mech difficult to maintain as a result of all of these advanced components and its overall design and construction, many of the parts within were non-standard and not immediately available in many instances. This meant that despite its battlefield performance, the Lament was a problem child to the army on a logistics and strategic level. What was even more problematic is that it wasn't even the only mech like this. This is a common feature of many of these Republic designs. The Republic, in order to keep up with their clan and house adversaries, would spend enormously investing in advanced, but difficult to maintain designs, or designs that ended up being wonder weapons, such as the super heavy series of tripod battle mechs. Inevitably, the Republic would not survive the wars which ravaged its exterior and then its interior. The clans would land on Terra, and would fight against its defenders in brutal battles for the homeworld of mankind and the Republic's capital. The Lament would be there, its pilots and the machine itself fighting and dying for the Republic which forged it, battling for the very soul of mankind. The Republic, a flawed political entity, which truthfully resembled more of an ideological military dictatorship than a Republic, would collapse under the clan assault. Billions would lament its passing, and its horrific destruction at the hands of the inhuman invaders of the former Star League Defense Forces. The question is now, will the Lament find a home outside of the Republic of the Sphere's influence? Scoble's history goes back to the original Star League, and eventually it would work with Comstar and then later the Republic of the Sphere. It has built mechs on Earth and CAF, but now both fall within the jaws of other states. The clans themselves, when they take over a planet, even if they allow the company to exist in some mutated, clan-serving form, they will typically build clan mechs moving forward, rather than just upgrading inner sphere battle mechs. The Lament at this time still sees use within militaries that purchased it from the Republic, but most of these are private military firms, and Clan Seafox. As of the fall of Terra, there is no supply chain to support these already difficult to maintain, but tactically brilliant machines. If they do survive, will they survive in any meaningful form either? Only time will tell, but as of this moment, perhaps its operators also lament the passing of the Republic at the center of the Inner Sphere. Entering service in 3127, the Lament was built to be as advanced as possible, and to not compromise as much as possible. This 65-ton monster is the peak of the Inner Sphere's deployments as of its introduction, and was still sold even in its LMT-2R form moving forward until the end of the Republic. For its core components, it utilizes a series of advanced technologies. First, it has a 3.5-ton endosteel internal structure, which helps the Lament save on precious weight in order to fulfill its design purpose. The LMT-2R also installs an XL gyro for the same reason, reducing its gyro's weight at the expense of additional critical slots, though its cockpit is of the normal variety. Of note, for its targeting and tracking, it has a Falcon 15 Watcher on board, which does confer it an advanced quirk, in the form of the Multi-Track Quirk which is an incredibly solid upgrade, allowing for it to allocate fire to multiple targets with ease. Beyond this, it's provided with the Protected Actuators quirk that helps it against infantry assaults. Unfortunately for the Lament, though, it also has the non-standard parts quirk, as well as the difficult to maintain quirk, both of which, together, can be incredibly hindering during a military campaign. And I really must stress this to be the case. One of the main elements of the Lament that can't be overlooked is its incredible mobility for its weight. It comes installed with a mighty 12-ton VOX 325XL engine, 
which confers it more than a respectable 86 kilometers per hour. This allows it to move eight movement points in the tabletop game. This is exceptional for several reasons. First, it moves as fast as many medium mechs and allows it to walk and run fast enough to gain better defensive bonuses. Second, it can reposition as needed and can score better angles of attack or range brackets as a result. Finally, it can get out of trouble should it face a much stronger enemy assault mech and potentially use its speed and the prior things listed to take a would-be defeat and turn it into a victory. In other words, all of this movement gives the Lament options on the battlefield. Despite being equipped more or less adequately for heat, the LMT-2R does invest in new technologies for its time, namely a radical heat sink system. This is used in an attempt to allow it to use maximum firepower, but sparingly so. First, it has 15 double heat sinks, allowing it to cool 30 every turn. This means it can fire both of its main cannons, reliably, while standing still, for two out of three turns if running. But it can't fire its secondary systems without overheating significantly, unless it uses its radical heat sink system. The RHSS gives the ability to cool off almost entirely if it should alpha strike. However, it can fail upon usage. Every consecutive turn of usage as well increases the chance of its total failure, meaning the safest bet is to use it sparingly. While this does help a great deal for cooling the mech, it is somewhat unreliable as a result, so it must be managed carefully. Where things really begin to show their teeth is in the punching power of the Lament. With 23 tons for weaponry, this means that the Lament had to spend these tons wisely in order to be effective. It doesn't invest in ammunition-fed systems due to the lack of tonnage needed to make them effective. The 2R is a very simple outlook as a war machine. Its primary weapon systems are a pair of Magna Supernova Heavy Particle Projection Cannons, with one in each arm. Each of these can deliver a head-capping blast of destruction, but even just hitting enemy mechs as a whole can be devastating body blows. As a backup for these, the Lament utilizes three diverse optics Sunfire ER medium lasers, with one mounted in each side torso and one mounted in the head. These, without using its RHSS system, will overheat the mech if it is used in tandem with its Supernova HPPCs. If not using the system, they act as a way to diversify the amount of shots at medium ranges. Still, the Lament, despite not having the most tonnage in the world for its onboard offense, can deliver extremely devastating barrages of energy fire. And with a good pilot, can trade blows with clan mechs in the same weight range. It is a horrifying beast to behold. With excellent firepower, unique but potentially unreliable heating, and fast mobility, one must assume that the Lament has to sacrifice defense. Much like battle mechs like the Hellbringer or the much more ancient Jaeger mech. The truth is, however, that the Lament does no such thing. Instead, it installs Krupp 205 light ferrofibers plating to safeguard the mech, and in significant quantities, having 12.5 tons of it. This gives it a more than respectable 211 points of armor on board, making it extremely robust should fire not slip past its armor plating with through armor critical hits. Without ammunition on board, it removes one of the most likely components to compromise its VOX XL engine, which could lead to it being knocked out of a battle early. In fact, offering it such superb mobility for its weight provides it with an extra layer of protection in and of itself. The Lament will make its opponents work to remove it from the battlefield. The total package is a term that best suits the Lament, despite some of its weaknesses. It can fight at all ranges, and it can fight well. It has no ammunition dependencies, or the vulnerabilities that come with that. It runs on the knife's edge when it comes to cooling, but it will be cool when managed responsibly. Its firepower is genuinely devastating, especially against other heavy mechs, and it works great in tandem with mechs which can sandblast or shotgun targets, exploiting the huge holes it's going to punch in enemy armor. Where are its weaknesses? 
its XL engine might mean it'll leave the battle early, if it gets focused on, but this won't happen immediately due to its lack of ammunition. The same thing applies to its XL gyro, but this is really it, and these problems are mitigated by its speed, firepower, and overall defense. Even its quirks, when used, make it vastly more dangerous with multi-track making it able to split fire easily. So even if you try to disrupt its attacks with a lighter mech, it can simply hit its RHSS system, light up the lighter mech with its ER medium lasers, and continue to pound its initial target with its HPPCs. The Lament is a monster, built by the same manufacturer that put together many of Comstar's best designs. And it's no wonder it bears a resemblance to them in its appearance and its effectiveness. It is the ultimate champion, in my opinion, of the dedicated Republic mechs. Unlike many Dark Age era mechs, the Lament, in fact, has a large number of variants to it, with the 2R just being the most mainline and produced model. Each of these has a unique series of features, though many of these don't change much about the unit. The LMT-2D more or less strips off a few tons in order to fit an onboard drone controller, in order for the Republic to attempt to use drones to stave off their defeat at the hands of the clans. The success rate of these drones and their operators doesn't need to be elaborated on much further, given the fall of the Republic. But there are several variants of true note, and I will be covering them here. The first two variants are incredibly similar to one another, with the only difference being a single small X-Pulse laser. The LMT-3R and the LMT-3C, differentiated only by the prior description, are the most dependent variants of the Lament's onboard radical heatsink system. And I think that's very much a problem for the design. Instead of depending on two heavy PPCs to deliver hammer blows, it instead opts to mirror the Awesome's full range of fire by installing three Inner Sphere ER PPCs. The R variant has two small pulse lasers, while the C variant only has one. The C variant benefits from having a C3 slave system, though there are few units remaining with a C3 master system to actually help this further. This is frankly, and truthfully, not particularly well suited to the design. It can only fire two without overheating, and overheating dramatically. While it can use its RHSS to remain heat neutral, every consecutive turn of operation increases the chance of failing. The system runs hot and doesn't truthfully outgun the 2R. Of all of the Lament's variants, it is truly the least capable in my view. The single most sophisticated Lament, however, the LMT-4RC, is a late generation variant of the mech built to be the most advanced single battle mech of its configuration as the Republic desperately attempted to build ever more dangerous and costly weapon systems to survive. The 4RC utilizes clan technologies on board, stripping out its original heat sinks in favor of clan ones, and pulling out its entire weapons package. A C3 slave is on board, as well as its original radical heat sink system. It has a total of 21 double heat sinks, letting it cool up to 42 every turn. And this dramatically rises with its RHSS system. And it needs that system, as it installs four clan weapons as its only weaponry. But this is terrifying to behold. It comes with four improved clan heavy large lasers. Each one of these hits harder than a Gauss rifle and goes as far as a traditional large laser. It generates 18 heat overall, meaning that while using its RHSS, it can safely fire three, or overheat firing all four. Each one of these delivers horrifying damage, and for many mechs, two to three rounds of consistent, on-target fire from this configuration will simply vaporize their entire battle mech. The 4RC is perhaps the most dangerous of the laments, being the most sophisticated, but it only furthers, in-universe, the problem of the Lament. Its logistics chain gets harder, its maintenance becomes even more expensive and difficult. It is the ultimate 65-ton warrior on the battlefield, being sturdy, powerful, and fast, but should it suffer damage, 
Can it appear on the battlefield again for months? Or ever again if parts can't be found? Sometimes the best isn't always the best. But that doesn't help opponents of the Republic when this monstrosity walks onto the field and melts a Timberwolf in a few moments of an engagement. Just to be clear. The Lament is perhaps one of the most exceptional Inner Sphere heavy mechs ever designed, using late Inner Sphere technologies. It's a brutalizing war machine that combines centuries of knowledge and production to produce a truly groundbreaking, mech breaking, total package of a heavy mech. But its virtues also were many of its drawbacks. Technologically sophisticated and using atypical parts meant that it was hard to support, even for the state that built it. The Lament goes to prove that being a tactically effective weapon doesn't mean a battle mech will be a strategically effective one. Just as with parallels in real life. A problem in the mech bay can be a real problem in the long term. Still, when the Lament displays its full value on the battlefield, as mentioned prior, its opponents will not be thinking to themselves that their opponent is logistically ineffective. They will be worrying for their lives or desperately plotting to see its removal from the field to save themselves or their comrades. The Lament took part in all of the Republic's greatest victories and its greatest defeats. The saddest one to me is perhaps the fact that the Lament appears to be much like a Comstar mech, especially given its manufacture, and would participate in the slaughter of the Blessed Order itself. In the end, the Republic of the Sphere, despite war machines like the Lament, was not able to hold on. This battle mech has a history for only a few decades, a drop in the bucket in the world of Battletech. If no other manufacturer picks up its production, with it now being a leftover from the dead Republic, it will prove the same. The flame that burns twice as bright burns half as long. But with that, as per usual, thank you for joining me here today. As with some of the prior entries I've done for these mechs, I've included a link to the various models for the Lament from Ironwind Metals in the description of this video. But almost as important, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. I do updates very frequently and you'll be happy with the content, I think. Also, a huge thank you to all the YouTube members for this channel. When you hit the join button and become a member, you take an extra step in supporting the content on this channel, and I can't thank you enough, because this content is really only possible because of viewers like you. And with that, I will see you all in the comment section below.